Hello and welcome to today's session. We begin looking at August Wilson's 1987 play, The Piano Lesson, which was an iconic event in uh, modern American uh, dramatic history. So The Piano Lesson changed the way in which African American plays were being looked at and it also carved out a new way to look at the African American history, the African American uh, heritage through the uh, through performances, through the stage uh, presences. So August Wilson's uh, play went on to achieve uh, numerous laurels as well. So in some sense, you know, it's both uh, uh, canonical as well as uh, part of this uh, popular culture. So um, moving on to this, uh, the, the, the kind of uh, uh, influence that August Wilson had in 20th century American drama. It's important to recall that he's uh, known as the theater's poet of black America and he's best known for the ten, uh, the, the series of ten plays uh, that uh, he uh, uh, you know, wrote and performed. The, uh, they are together known as the Pittsburgh Cycle. So nine of them were set, uh, set in uh, Pittsburgh where uh, he was born, where he lived and one is set in Chicago. So these plays are uh, collectively known as the Pittsburgh Cycle. It was the first of its kind event in the history of American drama. So this uh, series uh, uh, showcased the African American lives in ways that it uh, was never done before in uh, the theater's history. And this also uh, made it possible um, for both the white community as well as the African American community to look at their culture, their heritage, their history in a slightly different way. There was a different trajectory which uh, was uh, getting foregrounded the one which is uh, not otherwise found in uh, the uh, in, in the Amer in, in American drama, the otherwise found in most articulations which were part of popular culture then. So while trying to uh, capture the experiences and heritage of the African American community, we find that August Wilson also renders it a personal touch, an experiential touch, which makes it and all the more uh, impactful uh, as well. So uh, in one of the interviews that uh, he gave, he also remarked that his plays offer a different way to look at bl uh, black Americans. And this was very important in the 19, uh, from the 1970s onwards, and this is a 1987 play. This was very important during those decades, given the uh, many political and popular movements which had uh, been gaining momentum. It was also important to present an alternate view, which would be uh, absorbed, which would be imbibed as part of popular culture. So uh, August Wilson's uh, background was also slightly different, which also made it uh, made this experience very unique. That uh, his telling, his narration, very unique. His father was a Sudeten German immigrant, and his mother was an African American. Uh, so uh, he came from such humble origins, and the way he made inroads into American drama also became an inspiration for, uh, you know, it, in, in some sense, it showcased the uh, spirit and it showcased the, uh, the power of American dream. So if we compare August Wilson's plays with the rest of the American drama, uh, we will uh, also realize that it's a very different kind of a history that he's trying to foreground. And this alternate history is not seen as something um, uh, which, is, which is, you know, jarring. This alternate history is not seen as something which is not part of the American culture, but there is a very con concrete as well as concerted effort that we can find in his place to merge these histories together. And his intention is not to isolate the black American experiences as uh, very different from the, uh, you know, mainstream experiences of uh, uh, know, what has been portrayed so far in uh, uh, in American theater, but his uh, intention is to make sure that there is an assimilation without the uniqueness getting lost. So we find uh, August Wilson's uh, 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 plays, in a sense, you know, uh, fitting in as a perfect continuum to the earlier plays, uh, such as A Raisin in the Sun, where the African American experiences were beginning to be documented. So uh, here we find that it is more um, melodramatic in some sense without touching the, without really losing the realist touch and it also uh, has a way of you know getting into the nitty gritties of the African American uh, lives without again compromising what is essentially American in this uh, uh, genre. And so this uh, play was an iconic success as mentioned at the outset. So in 1990, 
The piano lesson went on to win a series of awards, including the Pulitzer uh, Prize for Drama. Being a Pulitzer Prize winner, his uh, other plays also began to get the kind of recognition that it had never got before. So in 1990, he won, other than the Pulitzer Prize, Drama Desk Outstanding New Play Award, New York Drama Critics Circle Best Play Award, and Toynette Perry Award for Best Play, American Theatre Critics Outstanding Play Award, and and so this uh, made this uh, play almost like a watershed event in, uh, in, in the year 1990. So uh, in, the, in that decade, right after the performance, right after the publication of the piano lesson, we also find a, 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 an increasing interest, an academic interest, a popular interest, a cultural interest in engaging with uh, the African-American plays from diverse perspectives. So this uh, may be seen, and this is also incidentally the final uh, play that we will be reading as part of this course. So it also opens up newer avenues for you to explore American theatre, for you to explore different ways of reading American theatre. And it, uh, if you continue to compare this with uh, the rest of the plays and uh, you know, uh, also more primarily, if you compare this with the very first play that we did as part of this course, The Emperor Jones, we find that the uh, treatment of race has radically changed in, uh, you know, in, in a few decades. The treatment of uh, uh, race, the treatment of uh, individuals whose, uh, uh, marker, whose marker of identity is primarily race, that uh, uh, has changed and this play also uh, highlights the need to uh, foreground different kinds of uh, approaches. So, uh, in uh, August Wilson's uh, uh, play, The Piano Lesson, we find that there is an exploration of a double world. There are both worlds which are simultaneously being explored, the African-American world, also the white world inhabited by the white Americans. So, this double world makes uh, this approach very balanced as well. And uh, along with this exploration of the double world, we find that there is a double consciousness, which is uh, not necessarily, you know, it, the, the compartmentalization is not always uh, uh, necessarily neat over here. There's a double consciousness, which sometimes overlaps, uh, um, you know, between and across these two uh, worlds as well. So what becomes very important in this play is how these characters are faced with certain life-defining decisions and particularly focuses on the difficult choices that the African Americans have to make given that their choices are also uh, determined and sometimes their choices also have a, uh, a heavy bearing on their past heritage and past uh, exigencies. And uh, this uh, is this issue this crisis, we find that it's more accentuated in a play like Piano Lesson compared to, uh, say, A Raisin in the Sun. In A Raisin in the Sun, too, we find uh, that the African American family is made to, uh, they, they have to make certain very difficult choices. And even within the family, there seems to be very little consensus about the kind of decisions to be made. And there is also a lot of money uh, which. Uh, uh, you know, they have to decide on, you know, on what ways to spend uh, it. And we also have certain characters in A Raisin in the Sun, where they find themselves in alignment with the American dream. Uh, certain characters who uh, feel that, you know, they, they, who feel that they have to get assimilated into the American culture. And also certain characters like Asigai, who feels the need to completely move away from America and trace their roots in, a, in, in an African country as well. So uh, here we find uh, that these life design, these life defining decisions, um, in, you know, uh, that are part of these families, that are part of these African American individuals, it uh, renders them a kind of uh, uh, humanity, renders them a kind of uh, uh, uniqueness, which also helps them to fit in with the rest of the uh, American drama, the rest of the American theater. So the piano becomes a almost like a, the piano emerges almost like a character in this play that the piano becomes that object which signifies metaphorically stands for the past as well as the present so I, in fact you know if you uh, think about the keys in the piano the black and white keys the intertwining of the black and white keys and how they have to function together in order to produce music that itself is a uh, very live metaphor of what this piano stands for. So, uh, in uh, here we find that um, metaphorically, as an object, this uh, piano stands as a reminder of the white culture, 
uh, that built the piano and of Papa Boy uh, Charles, uh, who was a slave, uh, who's uh, the slave character, the great grandfather of uh, uh, the uh, Bernie's and uh, uh, Boy Willie. Here we find that this uh, piano is a reminder of two cultures at the same time. It functions as a reminder of uh, twin cultures in a simultaneous sense. The white culture that produced the piano, the white culture that built the piano, and the black uh, uh, culture, uh, uh, you know, uh, whose vestiges are we continue to see in the uh, in, in the family of uh, uh, Papa Boy Charles. So Papa Boy Charles was a slave great grandfather and he was one who had carved these uh, African images, these uh, images of these totems and all into the uh, piano. So this pa piano in that sense becomes this uh, character who can imbibe both the cultures, both the worlds. And it is also an object which was uh, owned at different points by both the communities. And there is a historical, it, it, it stands as a muted character, but it is also some uh, an object, uh, a, a character uh, which uh, had witnessed this uh, shift in history, which had witnessed these changing patterns and changing trajectories in uh, hierarchy and uh, sense of ownership and sense of belonging. So uh, the piano is seen as uh, something which bears the ancestral blood of uh, both the white characters of both the white culture as well as the African American culture. So it was owned by a certain a certain family uh, for whom the Charles family was working as slaves. So it has the it bears the ancestral blood from both sides, and the uh, images which are carved into this piano, which is the images uh, are the, uh, you know, it, it's something which makes this uh, a piano very unique. Yeah, though, you know, it is part of uh, the uh, white culture, though it's a production, though it's something which was uh, originally uh, made by the white culture, we find that the images are something which help the African American uh, family, this Charles family, appropriate that piano as theirs. So these images narrate the plight of Boy Willie's and Bernice's slave ancestors. And they were in fact sold into bondage in exchange for the piano. And this is something, you know, which is there at the heart of this play as a foundation, as a historical foundation, as an emotional link with the piano. Papa Boy Charles, he also died while he was stealing it from uh, Sutter. Sutter was the white boss, who we also realize at the outset of this play that, you know, he also has uh, met with his death. So the piano also becomes a source of contention between the family members. So Bernie's and um, Boy Willie, they seem uh, to be having uh, a very different view on what to do with the piano. The piano is a legacy. The piano is something which has been handed down to them as a reminder of uh, uh, what they were before and what they have become now. And this becomes a source of contention because they both have Boy Willie as well as Bernice, they both have very different notions of what to do with this legacy, how to use this legacy. So that's something that we will also centrally look at as uh, the play progresses. So for, for Bernice, the piano is a, a haunting presence and it also literally becomes a haunting presence when she begins to see uh, Sutter's ghost upstairs. Yeah. So this, uh, uh, which is why, you know, uh, since it's a haunting presence for her, she also, she, she does not want to get rid of it, but she also uh, refrains from using it, utilizing it uh, fully. So she associates the piano uh, with her father's death and subsequently she thinks that her mother's suffering was also born out of that. So the piano becomes a very live object over here, an object which can continue to produce uh, trauma as well as uh, affect them with suffering even after the event has passed. So it's a, co a constant reminder a haunting presence and mind you she does not want to get rid of it either. She wants that presence to be there and that suffering also becomes cathartic in some sense perhaps for her. So it's a symbol, simultaneously it's a symbol of the tragic past and a familial heritage that must be honoured. So it becomes a very complex as well as complicated combination. This tragedy becomes something that the family needs to own, that the family needs to be constantly reminded of because the 
uh, the heart of their identity, the foundations of their identity also come from that tragic past. So it becomes a heritage which can uh, serve as a constant reminder of the journey that this family ha has undertaken over the last three generations. And this journey incidentally is not just a personal journey, it's not just a familial journey, it becomes a journey of the community as well. So uh, which is why the piano assumes a lot of significance in this play as a historical link. It serves as a historical link to the slave ancestors. So it's at the same time a signifier of sacrifice as well as beauty. But uh, for Bernice, the only flip side is that she chooses to see more of its sacrifice and she misses the beauty of it on uh, because of it, which is why perhaps, you know, she fails to assimilate the uh, these two together, which is why she also uh, does not educate her daughter on the history of this piano. She does not tell her about what these different images signify. So there is a, uh, there is a reluctance to pass on this story in its entirety, their history in its entirety. So I hope you're able to see this uh, uh, irony and the complexity over here when a character like Bernie's wants to continue to be in possession of uh, this piano, which is a signifier of, this, of their tragic past. But she is also not very confident about passing on this uh, legacy in its entirety when she is encouraging her daughter to take the piano lessons. So it becomes just another object which will produce music without um, making it a unique object which also symbolizes their past, their tragic past and uh, uh, you know what they were before. So it's a reminder of loss for Bernice. It's a reminder of loss whichever way, whichever way she chooses to look at it, but it is something which has to be preserved as well. And this, in fact, is also the dilemma and the crisis which um, most members of the African-American community also face. And here the trauma is uh, much more than perhaps the trauma that uh, uh, the African-American family in Raisin the Sun faced because there is a history of slave trade which is part of this. And this, is the, the, the kind of suffering that the Charles family had undergone, it seems to be uh, uh, quite immense in degree compared to perhaps, you know, the, the kind of difficulties that uh, the family, the, the younger family in Raisin in the Sun had encountered, yeah. So uh, here, uh, the, 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 the struggle over here is that since Bernice continues to be fixed on the past, almost fixated on what had happened and the tragedy and the sacrifice which were part of that uh, uh, the piano and uh, what had happened, this, the events which happened uh, around the piano and uh, right after procuring it, she finds it very difficult to conceptualize the future. For her, the future is something which is not as positive as, uh, uh, say, Boy really chooses to see it. She refuses to see this as an object which could perhaps make their future better than what it is now. And this is uh, where, uh, you know, we uh, find that Bernie's as well as uh, uh, boy Willie, they have to meet midway because it is only in the assimilation of both these uh, uh, perspectives we find that uh, 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 an appropriate kind of future could be envisaged for this family as well as for the community. So uh, on the other hand, for Boy Willie, the piano is uh, is an object which has to be utilized in a practical sense. And here we find Boy Willie almost subscribing to the capitalist ideals of uh, uh, the American society. And he sees this object as something to be capitalized on. It is capital for him. It is something which should be put to good use. So it's a practical perspective we find uh, um, in, uh, as, as being very dominant in Boy Willie's character and in his approach to the piano. And he recognizes its everyday use particularly in that scene where he encourages uh, uh, Bernice's daughter to take these lessons more seriously and uh, also tries to educate her on what is there in the, uh, the, the kind of images which are there uh, in the uh, piano. We find that uh, he is someone who wants to put this to daily use and it's not, uh, if, if you think about the title of the play uh, at this uh, moment, we find that, you know, there there. Uh, we do not encounter a real piano lesson over here, but the piano becomes an object through which many life lessons, many historical lessons, many lessons on identity are being learned over here. And for him, uh, learning to 
uh, use, you know, uh, use the piano, putting the piano to an everyday use. It, is, it does not come through, you know, learning music or, you know, pr practicing with the music sheets. It has to be an extension. The way he approaches the playing of the piano is, is an extension of the kind of music that the African-American uh, uh, community individuals have imbibed. It's more natural. It's not trained. It's, it's more original. Uh, it's more rhythmic. It is something, you know, which would help them to uh, uh, so say dance to the kind of uh, music which gets produced. And it's uh, they're very evident in the brief scene where he tries to engage with uh, Bernice's daughter about the everyday use and how differently the piano could be used. And he also, on the other hand, apart from its everyday use, he's also quite conscious about the future value of this, yeah? which is why, you know, he also has this very commercial plan in mind to sell the piano and uh, get some part of that money and use it to buy the land that Sutter's brother is about to sell. And that for him, uh, in that sense, a piano for him becomes a means to secure land, secure the land where his ancestors worked earlier. And now they, hear they are about to become the owners from that previous position of uh, having been slaves in the same land. So for him, the piano operates. The piano is there as a means to secure land. And for him, securing land also means securing freedom. And this is his uh, ticket. This is his passport to travel towards the American dream that the uh, the, the others seem to be uh, you know, having quite uh, naturally, quite automatically. And this, uh, this uh, you know, has another purpose as well. He will be able to secure his freedom by securing this land, but it also becomes a way for him to reconnect with his familial past. So in, uh, in a certain way here, we begin to see that both Bernice as well as uh, Boy Willie, they're very similar in nature. They both want to stay connected with their familial past, with their ancestral history, but in two different ways. One takes a perhaps, you know, a more mercenary or attempts to take at least, uh, you know, a more mercenary kind of a uh, route, which is looked down upon by Bernice. But Bernice takes a very emotional and uh, a very mystic kind of approach towards uh, her connection with her ancestors. And that is being seen with a lot of suspicion and uh, with, uh, with a lot of amusement by, uh, by, by Boy Willie. And but we find that, you know, both these approaches have something fundamentally very common because they both want to reconnect with their past. So, which is uh, why in, uh, in Boy Willie, uh, you know, remarks, you can stand right next to the white man and talk about the price of cotton, the weather and anything else you want to talk about. And this is the status that he hopes to achieve once he uh, gets hold of the land, which will come to him only by selling the piano. And this is perhaps a kind of life that he wants to uh, appropriate, that he wants to claim, where uh, equality, where freedom could be achieved by owning land, by owning property. And that gives him, a, uh, that, gives him that position uh, through which he, he can stand right next to the white man and talk to him about it. So, uh, in, in, interestingly, uh, even in uh, A Raisin in the Sun, the, it, it was, you know, uh, the, the uh, heart of that play is about owning property, owning property in a predominantly white neighborhood and the kind of uh, uh, struggles and uh, questions and concerns that it raises. So this, uh, the, uh, the, the struggle of an African-American person owning a property, which predominantly, which primarily belongs to the white community, to the uh, to the mainstream white life, that is seen as a possibility as well as a threat over here. But here, even within the family, we find that just the way we found in, uh, in uh, <coughs> uh, Raisin in the Sun, uh, we find that there are certain concerns within the family as well for varying reasons while such decisions are being made. And this becomes the decision to buy a property, the decision to sell a property. It becomes not just a, a mercenary, not just a, a commercial decision, but it becomes a life-changing decision which has the potential to change the identity and future of the uh, person, the uh, family and the community for good. So with uh, this, we bring this uh, very short introduction uh, to a close. And in the next session, we will start taking a look at the play in a greater detail in order to understand what the piano exactly stands for and what are the lessons which a play like this is uh, uh, rendering uh, when it is uh, uh, placed in the context of the African-American life. 
So uh, thank you for your time. I would look forward to uh, seeing you in the next session.